All right, next up we have Buy Forever versus Forge from Steel. Ooh, this is a tough one. Well, I mean, I know Rigoletto picked Buy Forever, Adam picked Buy Forever. I mean, they just beat War and Glory back in week six. I mean, you gotta go with Buy Forever, right? You know what? Fuck that. Forge from Steel, bitches. What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you the war recap into the matchup. Fortune Steel took on By Forever here in week seven, at no pun intended, right before the bye week. And as you guys can see it, Fortune Steel walking away with a massive victory with all odds against us, in all honesty, but winning by eight stars, guys. And keep in mind, I know the pickums were in Buy Forever's favor by something just over 82% of you guys picked Buy Forever to beat uh, Fortune Steel. I know a bulk of that, now all jokes aside, it's because Buy Forever just beat War and Glory back in week six. But I'm telling you guys, we had one of the best wars literally at every town hall level that we've had in league competition. We absolutely brought it. I mean, voice chat was literally going 24 hours for this war the sketching the plans shout out from town hall nines all the way up to the town hall 11s really 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 was an incredible war and we'll go ahead and take a look i mean as you guys can see it right there we had uh 31 three-star attacks versus their 26 uh so a big difference there and what it came down to were the uh were the 10 v 10s uh and i know by forever had a lot of 10 v 10s last week against war and glory as you guys can see right there they did leave a couple of our town hall 11s only one starred uh which was absolutely huge for us but if you look at our dip game only having one dip fill one of those was a 97 percent but we did go nine for 10 on our dips. If we go ahead and check out by forever side, they went seven for 10. So a big difference in the star total right there. They had two more dip fills than we did. As far as the 10 v 10 game, uh, we had five 10 v 10s versus their two. So they definitely struggled. Also what hurt by forever were the town hall nines. Granted, they had a few scouts but they did have to dip quite a few of our nines as well in order to clear them, which really did make a, make up a huge difference uh, in this war was getting those scouts. Town Hall 9 is still a very crucial Town Hall level, uh, but definitely struggled with our Town Hall 9 bases. So big shout out to all the base builders and all the Town Hall 9s FCing literally for an entire week straight trying to get these bases prep for what we know by forever an absolute monster clan so this is what we did to their side of the map as you guys can see it on our hit ups we did very very well uh let me see we went five for 11 so we were just under 50 percent, which is still above uh the league average we went five for 11 on the hit ups which is absolutely huge and like I said, we had five 10v10 triples. We will take a look at uh, all five of those attacks. I have a lot of attacks to show you guys. So towards the end, I will be fast forwarding through the very end, through the cleanup, just so I can show you guys all the attacks. And as far as our Town Hall 9s, guys, we had a total of nine scouts, uh, which really set the pace uh, to get some of our 10v10 attacks in nice and early. And really, I mean, just an amazing job. Like I said, Town Hall 9s, our Town Hall 10s, not only our Town Hall uh, 10v10 guys, but our Town Hall 10 hit up guys, and our Town Hall 11s, only having one dip fail going nine for 10. Absolutely huge. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and check out one of our Town Hall 9 attacks. This is the infamous Rago, gonna be doing a Sui Hero Lalo an attack that he has been favoring a lot lately. So go ahead and check that out. And after this, we'll go ahead and jump into all five of the 10v10s that I'll have to show you guys, as well as one of our hit-ups as well, uh, which is also very crucial. Um, and I mean, especially with the hit-ups, we, 
we've had uh, quite a few wars where we've done very, very well. We've had a couple wars where we've kind of struggled. Unfortunately, that's where Buy Forever also struggled. Uh, the total amount, uh, real quick, they went three for 16, so definitely struggled with our Town Hall 11 bases, uh, but that's really what it came down to. But uh, once we make it through the Town Hall 10 replays, I will go ahead and show you guys one of our hit ups uh, before we go ahead and wrap up this war recap. Okay, as you guys can see it right there, we have Rago just completely smashing this base, swarming it with all kinds of balloons. Nice heal spell down there, and he did drop a skelly spell uh, to go ahead and try to get the queen. Unfortunately, some of those skellies ended up on the other side of the wall, so she's just going to be uh, shooting those skeletons from over the wall, but but there was uh, the little pup that could that was able to take out that queen and he goes ahead and drops uh, his another heal spell right there on that wizard tower right before uh, the last defense to go down which was that Tesla nothing but clean up Rago six packing this war uh, big shout to him again big shout to all of our town hall nines we had quite a few guys that had six packs some of our European guys woke up uh, what would be the middle of the night for me seeing that all the nines were cleared a couple guys had to scout with both of their attacks So again big big shout out Okay, here's our town hall 10 action starting off. We're gonna start from the bottom working our way up We have Raj gonna be coming in here Gonna be doing a queen charge Lalo very very nicely done bringing all kinds of minions to this attack as well just starting over here at about 2 30 uh, where he's going to be starting this charge where he's going to be getting all kinds of value before he goes ahead and starts the uh flight portion so goes ahead and uh breaks the first layer of walls as he is uh does have his eyes set on getting those air defenses as well as those wizard towers as notice as the wizard tower was distracted he goes ahead and drops his wall breakers down and goes ahead and drops down the rage wall breakers are going to get that wall down in time and there was a golem loon that comes out of the cc and he has to end up you're going to see he has to end up burning another rage because he ends up shooting the golem he ends up shooting the golem while the queen is shooting his queen. Uh, so goes ahead and drops a poison for her. Uh, so very, very good execution getting that down. There goes the second rage. As uh, Once the golem gets uh, chewed up, goes ahead and basically two shots the queen under rage and had to burn his ability there as well. But very, very nicely done. Here comes the flight portion. Does have a few spells uh, for it. Goes ahead and drops down a couple haste, leading all those loons into the Inferno Tower where they catch that rage. Look at all those loons raged up as they make their way through the core of this base. Fighting that sweeper, those loons are still under uh, the effects of that rage a little bit. Goes ahead and drops a heal and a haste down as that pack of loons are making their way to the Inferno Tower. And notice he still has his king up as well uh, that was trimming trash. Queen is still on this charge, working her way up to 12 o'clock. You guys are going to see his loons kind of die out right here as the wizard tower was not locked on to the queen and she's just out of range uh, from that archer tower up there at 12 o'clock. But you're going to see he has all kinds of minions. I believe he brought 12 minions along to this attack, has all kinds of pups up. And like I said, even his king survived this attack. Very, very nice execution uh, by Raj on that attack right there. Okay, next up. We did actually have quite a few, or at least, yeah, a few. Yeah, we had a few hog attacks from this war, uh, 10v10. This being one of them, we have Hikari uh, going to be breaking this base down, doing a CB Hobo, or CB Vaho, excuse me. Uh, does have a couple bowlers, but that's just... Uh, to go ahead and trim some trash. Uh, but if you guys look down in the troop bar, check that out, bring in eight Valkyries. So he had, uh, again, going CB, AKA one Golem, and bringing eight Valkyries along to this attack. As you see right there, he is gonna go ahead and suicide his queen just to pick up some defenses, break the defensive defensive ring as he's gonna be starting his hogs over there at nine o'clock. Here comes the Golem, uh, already set a really nice funnel uh, for his troops here. Here goes the bowler. Going to go ahead and get a nice rock skip on those two mines right there. King is going to be uh, funneling that dark barracks up there. Here comes the wall breakers as all the defenses were distracted 
by the Golem. And here comes the Valkyries. They're going to be making their way right into the core of this base, guys. Uh, goes ahead and drops down a jump spell, followed up by a leading rage. And notice those Valkyries, uh, they, since the Inferno Tower is right next to the Town Hall, uh, they go ahead and fit nice and snug right between those two buildings. One swing under rage, Town Hall goes down, Inferno Tower goes down, even got an expo. And here comes all the hogs. He is also bringing uh, max level seven hogs in the CC as well. And he does have three heal spells to push them. And as you guys can see, clearly the defense, uh, how the defenses are going to be, how the hogs are going to be pathing between the defenses in that, in that nice L shape. Uh, since he suited his AQ, gutted the core, and going from 9 o'clock down to 6, up to 3 o'clock, very, very nicely done. Goes ahead and drops his last heal spell uh, right there in front of that wizard tower uh, to go ahead and grab that giant bomb that was right there. And with all these hogs left, including those max hogs that came out of the CC. Only three point defenses, no splash over there at the three o'clock side of the base. Nothing but cleanup. We will go ahead and times four this for you guys. Again, as I do have a lot of attacks uh, to get through to show you guys. But Hakari completely smashing that base. Very, very nicely done. Okay, next up, this is our third 10v10 of the war. We have two more to get through. Uh, like I said, we did have five. A uh, huge shout out to the Town Hall 10s. And here is another hog attack, uh, again by Misaki. Usually he does favor uh, some sort of a queen charge, either with dragons or a queen charge uh, Lalo attack. As you guys can see, doing it with hogs. Uh, very, very nicely done. Uh, goes ahead and also does this with a... Uh, CB kill squad with the one golem and notice that queen is still up over there on the left hand side of the base taking out these defenses goes ahead and pops her ability and similar to Hikari's attack you can kind of see the defense pathing uh, how the hogs are going to be pathing through this base uh, just gonna be going down from six up to three and ending up at the top of the base and look at the value from that freeze guys uh, gets the IT gets the archer tower gets a Tesla and gets a wizard tower all in that one freeze. Huge value, nice heal as that uh, single giant bomb did pop as the hogs were hopping that wall to the next section of the base. And again, just a couple uh, point defenses left. Uh, hogs are gonna go ahead and end on that mortar once that Tesla goes down. And he did have uh, cleanup down nice and early, does have a few wizards as well as a few minions to help uh, clean up this base. Very nice attack uh, from Hakari getting another 10v10. So huge, huge shout out uh, to Masaki. Okay, next up, one of my favorite attacks of the war, you guys. Uh, uh, an attack that really does smash uh, these symmetrical base layouts, especially with these uh, with the air defense layouts. Uh, you can see he's going to get amazing value right here. Uh, basically from this naked queen walk notice he drops down a couple giants just to help tank the queen and he is going to be doing a kiwi walk over here at nine o'clock on the far left hand side of the base and just with the king and just a few wizards behind he's going to get all kinds of value and notice over there on the right hand side as he's just trimming these defenses uh, when he pops the ability he ends up grabbing that expo from right over the wall huge huge value and these wizards are going to be taking out this cannon and this archer tower as well. Here comes the hounds, only bringing two. He's got a hound coming out of the CC. And he does bring a camp hound along to the attack as well. And just doing, I mean, just swarming this base with loons. Uh, this mass lalo going up from the top down to the bottom. Notice he does have those rages side by side and a leading rage to get to both the wizard towers in the core, the enemy queen and both inferno towers. And look at that huge wad of loons still up. Gets a nice split as those loons are gonna collapse on that inferno tower as they were still under rage. Even haste a few loons on the backside as well uh, to take out that 80 that was down there at six o'clock and again, Nothing but cleanup. Very, very nicely done uh, by Jacob. Missed his skelly spells a little bit, but he did have enough pups and enough minions to go ahead and get the job done. Huge shout out uh, to Jacob. He has been on 10v11 duty uh, pretty much for the whole, I mean, 
since the beginning of the CWL in season three. So he finally got his hand since our 10v11 guy smashed it. He was able to get that 10v10 opportunity and ended up getting a triple. Big shout out to Jacob. Okay, next up, another hog attack. Actually, I think this was my favorite attack of the war. This has to be it right here. Wait till you guys see this attack from Heli Case uh, on his Town Hall 10. Notice he's doing a, a basically a naked queen walk. Uh, has a baby drag over there. Uh, only using a golem. Not, not bringing healers. Just using that 30 troop space for a naked queen walk as she's starting from 12 and walking down. He is entering this base uh, with two more golems over on the upper right hand side. Wall breaks in. Has a nice jump and a rage uh, for this kill squad as he did bring max bowlers and uh yeah did just he didn't have any camp bowlers just max bowlers coming out of the cc just completely gutting this core guys and here comes his swarm of hogs coming in from the bottom as just have a couple heal spells notice that baby dragon on the bottom right hand side is still up uh that's when you know you got good value from a baby drag when your baby drag lasts the entire raid uh when it was intended just to funnel huge value there look at how fast this baby Base collapsed you guys the base is already gone completely smash that base and notice the queen is still up on that naked queen walk and he still has the archer queen ability huge huge shout out to heli case uh, really smashing that base right there okay next up we have Captain Oates gonna be doing uh, 10 v 11 on this base right here doing it with dragons and something that we don't see a whole lot I really liked how I have seen it a couple times, but it's been a while. But notice he has uh, two zaps for an air sweeper uh, that would be pushing all his drags away from the town hall and keeping the drags inside the inferno tower beam. Notice he's gonna go ahead and zap it. Notice he doesn't quake. Uh, two zaps will take out a max level uh, air sweeper. The quake is actually gonna be to soften up the IT the clan castle and the town hall gonna get huge value um, just from those three spells right there. Uh, notice he does have king and queen over here on the upper right hand side of the base at about two o'clock, just trimming, uh, getting, well, trimming the trash, taking out some defenses, uh, but more importantly, creating the funnel for the dragons. And again, when you create the funnel on these hit ups, you're also getting percent in hopes of getting above 50. Okay, so uh, Queen goes ahead and pops the Queen ability, ends up dying right before she could take out uh, that Wizard Tower, but the funnel has been set. He did start off with uh, a few loons and a haste to grab that Archer Tower. So you can already clearly see the funnel has been set. Notice all the Expos on this base are on ground. Not sure if that was a mistake or if that was intentional, but all four of these Expos are on ground. Uh, so Captain Oates really taking advantage of this base uh, using these dragons. And again, they don't have an air sweeper to fight against since he went ahead and zapped it. You can see all those drags in the core already over at 50%, at 53% right now. Town Hall goes down. He is now at 55% and still has a few dragons up, uh, still has an archer and a few minions as well. Uh, so job already done is nothing but just getting more percentage at this point, uh, but a very, very nice attack uh, by Captain Oates on this hit up, ending at 60%, you guys. And that was pretty much the war recap. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge, huge shout out to Buy Forever. It was an amazing war. Again, I do know quite a few of the guys over there. Shout out to Joey. Shout out to Rigoletto. And shout out to Tweaks as well. Shout out to Tweaks Coffee. And most importantly, shout out to everybody in Fortune Steel. Town Hall 9s, Town Hall 10s, Town Hall 11s. All you guys should be very proud of yourselves uh, for getting this huge victory and uh, going into the bye week with the win that now moves forward from Steel to four in three on the season in CWL Invite. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.